year. Back with another one. This time we got top 10 Attack on Titan season 4 moments. By top 10 anime. So, wow. wow. Where is his arm? Kakashi? That's true. Naruto did fail the pause test entirely. Multiple times. <laughs> but I had not expected from this. Uh, this fight was still beautiful. Like, it's, like I'm not going to lie. This fight is still beautiful. I'm not going to like shut it, anything down. But I just didn't expect to see it on this fight. Because it was just so beautiful. Shoot. Alright, let's get it going. Make sure y'all like the video. Comment, subscribe, by the way. The final season. Part 1 has come to an end, and it was an epic ride. So much has changed over the four-year gap on both Ooh, sides. Ooh, I wanted her to get bodied oh, so no, bad. So bad. Did I already do this video? I feel like I already did this video. If any. I, I gotta make sure I didn't do this video. Attack. On Titan. Let's see. Season four moments. Is it by the same people? I did. I definitely did. Did something similar. I just didn't. <laughs> I guess I. Let's see. By wish. Okay. Okay. This is not the same video. Cool. So. Uh. Yeah. This is a complex moment where you are glad that Gabby is finally understanding and having a development. But at the same time, you can't help but feel bad for Kaya. Especially I was like, yeah! Body and grief. Kill and her! And Kill her! A single screen. Stab her! Do a Joker! Just like Joker from Mortal Kombat 11. Do her, do his fatal blow on her. The look on Gabby's face as she bing, starts to realize bing, what the real devil bing. is. Was a somewhat satisfying moment. Ooh. She thought she killed the devil, but all she really did was become a devil herself. Yup, cause you trash. Robbing the life Gobby, of loved one. trash. The forgiving nature of the Blast family, garbage. The survey call only adds to the crumbling beliefs of Gabby. You piece of booty. That's how bad you. I hate you. I hate your guts. I was so hoping the dad, real quick, just get her with a three-piece stab. You know there's trouble when Reiner is tired of walls. It was an epic entrance, but surprisingly, it wasn't an easy battle, especially when multiple titans were involved. It goes to show just how powerful technologies have grown to pose a threat to even titans, especially when the armored titan has to use a shield. I swear, this, this whole season just like changed everything. Nevertheless, the teamwork between the armored titan Jaw Titan and Beast Titan was an epic moment. This video been on the players for a Owen minute. And the scouts for defeating four Titan shifters. Imagine the world's reaction if they hear that they fought Titans with just horses, swords, and grappling hooks. In fact, In one. the Beast Titan was taken out by just one guy. Yep. That was crazy. I forgot about this. Not sure whether to be sad or angry. This trio has been through a lot and have always had each other's back, but never would have guessed a split within this group. However, Eren has grown to be utterly ruthless and has taken things a little too far. He insults and degrades his two closest friends with no hesitation. Mikasa being told that all her feelings were mere consequences of her bloodline was a heartbreaking moment. That's Especially crazy. seeing his stand all helpless as Armin is ruthlessly beaten up. It's like, bro, Armin, you are... Matter, Eren, like, come on, dog. Person, You've been in the military for how many years? Levi restructures Eren's face. Oh, 
ガビも静かに This is the final episode of the first part, and the animation of the Titans was even better. Peak managed to infiltrate and get close enough to place a gun on Eren. But current Eren can't be phased by anything. He was a complete badass, and didn't even remove his hands from his pocket. For a brief moment, it seemed as if Peak wanted to switch sides. But the minute we saw Porco mingled with the military group, it was apparent something was not right. It was not long after the Jaw Titan attempts to eat Eren, and the rest of Marley are seen infiltrating through air. Like it's real crazy how they managed to they managed to switch sides of who you really are rooting for. Cause you start off rooting for like Eren and, and uh, the other like I guess what do they call themselves Marleyans? Oh, it don't matter. It it really don't. But uh Eren and their group and then as Aaron start tripping and taking over, then you start being like, hold up now, hold up now. I'm starting to root for these guys over here. And then they go into see the half, like the first part. I'm like, come on, bro. Come on. Come on. But I mean, I get him. I get them. They put in work. They, they, you know, it look. It... What can I really say about it? It just looks so good. Like. <laughs> Attack on Titan teaches many lessons, and one of those is the importance of parenting and how a lack of love can create monsters. Grisha's screaming was one thing, but the looks he gives is an equally powerful weapon against a seven-year-old. Those lines are so effective. The, the terror glares line. of disappointment and resentment from your own parent is a horrible feeling. Ironically. Grisha's traumatic childhood, in turn, resulted in him burdening his own son, causing a similar traumatizing childhood. <laughs> Ideally, Eren was the son Dina and Grisha wanted, a warrior with a strong desire for freedom, whereas Zeke is the child Carla wanted, not wanting her son to be a soldier. Although their personalities could be simply the result of their upbringings, one under pressure and brainwashed for freedom, while the other naturally experiencing oppression of living like cattle in a pen. They had me shook though when I found out they were like Aaron were oh my gosh. Kill her like stomp her out. I was screaming going. stomp her out. Stomp her in season one. Pure I'm hatred. The, you can see my foot, but... killed her friends and innocent people. Aaron is the result of Marley's hatred. And Gabby is the product of the retaliation. Nevertheless, it was painful to see the fan favorite Potato Girl die. You killed her! Especially when it was off. Like, that's what I'd have did. Absolutely no cause. Straight up. Even in her dying moments, she cheers up the crowd with her last words Meat. It was a heartbreaking moment seeing her friends in tears, especially Connie, struggling to even cry properly. Mm. Gabby's hatred and actions may be justified. However, it was still thoroughly satisfying to see her beaten to a pulp. Yep, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Other dude didn't deserve it. He was just—he was just like, "Wait, whoa, what happened?" This was cool as hell, though. They was taken so off guard. If anyone saw season four without context, they would assume the Survey Corps were the villains. This was one brutal episode. Thanks and yet an epic entrance at the same time. After years of being on the receiving end, the Survey Corps get to serve Marley a glimpse of the same horror they experience. Ironically, it's the Marleyans that force the development of anti-Titan weapons and highly specialized super soldiers trained for high speed and coordinated combat against Titans. Many aspects of this episode is reminiscent of season one, except the roles have now been flipped especially seeing nearly half the newly introduced cast killed in a single scene. The only thing missing was Erwin's war cry. See, that's crazy because that happened in season one too. You meet all these, these cool scouts and then they just get eliminated. Like, I, I was prepared this time. I was not prepared back then. Had me shook. Just... Oh my gosh, I was I was kind of heated too. I was like, bro, what the 
was the point of me learning all these new people? We finally see Aaron in action, and he has certainly powered up over the years. Not just with his physical abilities, but also mentally. He's no longer the team that charges blindly while screaming at the top of his lungs. He's calm. Yeah, he's changed now. While calculating each of his moves. This was one epic fight. Aaron didn't even give the Warhammer Titan the chance to transform. But unfortunately, the only Titan he attacks, mid-transformation, is the only Titan that it doesn't work on. The Warhammer Titan may have been physically superior, but against this new Eren, it simply wasn't enough. Is Annie still in the ice? Was she just chilling down there? The long-awaited rematch between Levi and the Beast Titan, although it wasn't really much of a fight, it was both badass and sad at the same time. He had to lose his comrades once again, but to make things worse, he had to kill them with his own hands. Wait. Both of them knew with Zeke very well dead. how strong Levi is. Several abnormal titans were certainly not enough to take him out. But Zeke's expectation was for Levi to hesitate killing his own comrades. But little did he know that losing men is just another day for Levi. Levi is not just physically strong, but also mentally very strong. Yeah, he's been through However, it was still painful to see his eyes slowly transition to a lifeless state again moments before massacring his own men. Not long after, Zeke was completely destroyed within minutes. Well, was Zeke dead? Can they even transform everybody into Titans now? Was that a Zeke-specific power? Or... I know they explained it, but it's been a minute. I forgot, like, I think it was a Zeke's, I thought it was a Zeke specific power that he could transform him with his yell. But I guess it, it might be, because I know the Founding Titan can control other Titans with his, like, you know, by screaming, but he needs the, the you know, royal blood or whatever. So, like, I thought that was like a Beast Titan thing to be able to use his own spinal cord stuff. So they're not really hostages anymore, but they don't know that Zeke is dead. There's gonna be an all-out war. The tension Eren creates in this season makes this a whole new type of anime. This is one of the tensest conversations in anime. Two soldiers having an open conversation explaining each other's cause. Eren spent three whole seasons seeking revenge, but has come to a point of understanding the circumstances that Reiner and the others were in, especially mm -hmm. when they were just kids. On the other hand, Reiner crumbles, filled with guilt and begs to be killed. It was a sad yet beautiful moment to witness two victims of this sinister cycle of hatred exchange their thoughts and the madness they are trapped in. Unfortunately, the life of Reiner was not sufficient anymore, as Eren was not after revenge. He is now in the same position as Reiner was all those years I mean, technically ago. Technically, it is revenge. The next scene was Eren replicating those horrors that Reiner brought all those years ago. But it's like, honestly, it's just revenge on the world at this point. <laughs> Eren just out for blood. He want to end Titans forever. And this is his way. If you enjoyed that, a like would be oh, a huge that was so unfortunate. I did not mean to click on that. Yep. Yep. Okay. That, uh, shoot. Aaron, honestly, honestly, Aaron is just, he just really wants to get rid of these Titans as, as bad as possible. Why is, okay, laptop, stop, stop. Okay. I'm going to get out of here. It's breaking. It's breaking. Um, so I hope y'all enjoy. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what y'all favorite Attack on Titan moment. Not just season four. All of it. All of it. I'm still thinking about that. You know, if what's going to happen. Don't spoil also. don't If you read the manga, don't spoil. Because I'm definitely going to be watching. So, hope y'all enjoy. Like, comment, subscribe. I'm out. Peace.